Hey all, welcome to my channel. So I finally saw, I didn't get a chance to see it this week uh, um, or yesterday basically, or even the day before, but uh, in regards to the final episode of Acolyte. So now that it's finally finished, it's, I guess you could call series finale instead of season finale because based on the fact that it sounds like Disney is not going to pick up or renew for the next season. Uh, it's a case where I can say in one of my earlier videos that it had potential, put it this way. This definitely had some potential. Uh, it's just more so that they broke away from some of the canon aspect of things and they were trying to bring in some aspects of the canon from the books and such. But unfortunately, it's like from this perspective, from the past two episodes, we're finding out like May and Osha are actually a result of virgins, meaning like Anakin Skywalker, um, these two are also like kind of this from a perspective that from virgins they were one split into two which means the um the night witch sisters seeing as how they have power over within the force or are able to manipulate the force just like you know for other force users um considering that what they did with um if you saw clone wars what they did with darth maul uh, it seems like this is the exact same thing basically to the point of, like they were able to use the force as well as some other mystics as aspect of things to do this. Uh, but by the fact that the fact they were able to say that virgins created like Ocean May together, mind you, sorry uh, for spoilers or if not, it sounds like more so to the point of, like if the Night Sisters were able to do this, it sounds like more than to the point where like then it falls into the lore of or canon of uh, Anakin Skywalker where Palpatine must have created uh, Anakin Skywalker and now there are, there's you know like there's some canon out there about that that Palpatine was the one that was able to manipulate the force so that Anakin would be born um, or Anakin Skywalker sorry so if that's the case it kind of could explain that from that perspective but the problem is is if this is if this is true the real question comes down to is this um you see at the end of this at, at the end of the uh yeah at the end of the episode basically uh you see a head of basically pretty much yoda so if this is a case where yoda's there as well as i forgot that dude's name but he's the one that basically in uh, phantom menace says like we haven't seen um the we haven't seen uh, uh, the Sith in over a thousand years, even though this is the Acolyte's supposed to be taking a hundred years before um, uh, Phantom Menace, uh, or maybe 150 years from my understanding, but like the dude basically that has a long forehead. Anyways, to the point where like he was in, the, in, in Acolyte. And it seems like there might be other Jedi Masters as well too. To the point where like, if they're aware of Osha at that point, and they're aware of the Sith, why are they broke away from the canon of what Phantom Menace wants? So, or, or somehow they're going to try to resolve it some way or some form. But in reality, is I doubt it. Uh, but the problem is, is it shows to a point where, like, it's possible from this perspective that maybe, just maybe from this with Osha and May, they somehow teach... Um, the emperor's master at that point uh that sith lord i forgot the sith lord's name actually i've got i'm gonna have to look it up now i forgot palpatine's uh master darth plagueis um uh, that basically darth plagueis is the one that probably or in this situation uh taught uh palpatine how to manipulate the force to create life i don't know but the problem is is like with darth plagueis darth plagueis uh is from my understanding dates back even further than the acolyte so it's a possibility that you know somehow some way the witch sisters the night sisters probably are the ones that taught play uh, you know darth sidious how to do this but in any case it's to the point where, like, the fact that there's always these this virgins uh, within the forest and the planet, it would have been interesting to see how they would explain about the planet a little bit in Acolyte or the next season, like how the planet itself probably was responsible, per se. I don't know. 
Uh, it would be interesting to see how that works out from that perspective, but yeah. Um, in any case, um, would I recommend this? I'll say this. This series kind of, from a Star Wars perspective, not so good. If I had to rate it, it would be probably way below, uh, farther below than, uh, you know, what uh, Kenobi was. Uh, and definitely lower than Solo, quite honestly. I mean, I kind of started enjoying Solo. Acolyte, it's like, falls underneath it. Um, but if it's an independent, independent Star Wars story, let's say it was not Star Wars, but something completely different, then I could see, yeah, it's probably good from that perspective. But the fact that it wasn't in the Star Wars, I don't want to say genre, but more so the feel of Lucas and his, you know, like, it seems like Lucas had no part with this whatsoever, nor did Filoni have aspects, you know, any in intake into this as well, which is why I fully believe Quite honestly, if there's ever going to be another series, like the way we saw with The Mandalorian, Filoni <laughs> was pretty much one of the writers and producers. And that's why The Mandalorian for the first two seasons were good because Filoni and um, uh, uh, John Favreau basically were having free will, rain, uh, reign to create it. And that's why The Mandalorian became so popular. But of course, Disney executives getting involved in it Forced a lot of crap. That's why the Book of Boba Fett was horrible too. Quite honestly. Actually, you know what? I'll say this. Yeah. Acolyte is probably a little bit better than the Boba Fett. Basically, the Book of Boba Fett. At least it's a little bit better than that from that perspective. But outside of that, I hate to say this, but like it's more so to the point of like I think like the way Kevin Feige was for Marvel, for Disney, uh, for, for Star Wars, being the fact that Lucas is probably too old and he doesn't want to be too involved in it i think feloni should be heading up the star wars franchise itself basically because let's be honest this is the man that like gave us clone wars um uh and uh rebels as well as mandalorian uh, mandalorian so rebels was pretty good so honestly i think it's more of a case where like this is a situation where i think feloni needs to be disney needs to give him complete control of basically the Star Wars franchise and let him develop the series and move and movies from there from that point on because let's be honest Return of the, uh, the Last Jedi Rise of Skywalker and um oh I forgot the the first one uh with when they introduced Finn um damn it man my mind is really Star Wars The Force Awakens. Sorry, yeah. With The Force Awakens, Rise of Skywalker, and The Last Jedi. It it just... I, I if, if Disney can... And Star Wars... You know, like, if Lucas is like, yeah, I don't want it them... No, 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 no. Forget that. Let's just cut them out. Like, that's just... A deviant, a multiverse aspect of things. And go into the aspect of, like, you know, like, hey, let Filoni handle the next series and next movies. I think we'll see a much better outcome. And I don't think you'll see the kind of Star Wars fatigue that we're seeing, that we saw a little bit, that we're seeing with Marvel movies now. I mean, like, quite honestly, yeah, some of the Marvel movies, I'm getting a little tired of it. I'm, unless, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next year. Uh, not this year, but next year. Let's see what happens. I mean, I'll, I'll, well, first off, foremost, I think Deadpool, Wolverine, that movie, I think that's probably going to reinvigorate uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe at that point as well, too. Because let's be honest, it's Deadpool. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, you know, and yeah, they know what they're doing. Uh, it's kind of interesting to the point where, like, I think Filoni would be great, but also Kevin Smith, even though he's more of an independent director. I think this is the man. I, I'm, I'm really surprised that Kevin Smith is not one of those people that can is never called upon when it comes to writing and producing of uh, writing and directing a superhero movie or star wars um it'd be great if he could actually to be honest i would love to see kevin smith disney calling up to kevin smith like hey look we want you to create a star wars series like 
rework, you know, like not like Act Light, but like in your realm of what you think it would be, whether it be animated or non, it would be interesting to see how that works out and like let him have the feel. Because like he is one of those guys that does have the feel of Star Wars and he knows George Lucas well enough. He's absorbed a lot of his movies that I and a lot of his persona per se like Filoni has that I think Kevin Smith and Filoni together could create a bigger franchise than the MCU quite honestly but I'll leave it at that um, but again like I said with Acolyte would I watch would I recommend it if you're a Star Wars fan not really I would not bother to but if you're not a Star Wars fan then yeah probably you could watch it a little bit more so to the point where like it creates a sort of I don't want to say explanation but more so well quite honestly this is the thing like the senate uh showing the aspect of like you know like well that one senator I forgot his name now everything's like really weird in my mind right now but this to the point where like the senator in acolyte that was pretty much wanting to put the Jedi in check calling him a, not a cult not a religion but more so about emotions and such. And it was one of those things where like, you know, this is this is interesting. That's an interesting take. Just like the Night Witches, why are they considered evil and bad? I mean, just because they're force users. Whereas the Jedi, how did they become all encompassing and good? Because the fact that there's no emotion. Let's not forget, without emotion you could still be bad or evil in a ways. From a perspective of like, you know what? Or you hide your emotions. Whereas, instead of love, because like let's let's be let's be honest, we've seen Luke use some of his emotion, a lot of his emotions, l l same as Vader, some of those emotions. It's one of those things. It'd be great, honestly. I would love to see if Filoni and Smith, or who, yeah, Filoni mostly, to go back and actually talk back, you know, direct a movie or direct a series in the very beginnings of early first Force users. That would be great to see. Quite honestly, I mean, I know there's books about that, but it'd be great to see them bring it upon themselves to bring it into a series or movie and letting us see how it works out from that perspective. But with that, I'll just leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts with Acolyte at this point as well, too. Do you think it was worth a watch or did you hate it? Did you despise it? Whatever it may be. I mean, I'm not going to say I despise it, but it still felt at least it was a little bit better than the book of Boba Fett. Let's be honest. It was definitely better than that. Unless... You think otherwise. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, and again, I read my comments. I read all my comments. I do respond to them when they weren't a response. But with that, I'll leave it at that. And I actually exceeded more than I should have exceeded uh, with my time allotment. But I try to cap it at 15 minutes. But anyways, with that, I'll leave it at that. Unfiltered. And if, sorry, if you like my video, like my channel, like my content, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. But with that, I'll leave it at that. Unfiltered, unedited, and of course, always unrehearsed. Until next time.